Okay, so in the last video, I just used the layer style effects to add the color, the outline, the drop shadow, the inner glow, and the gradient to my black type. And it's still a smart object, means it still won't let me, it's still protected because it's not rasterized. Which means I could still resize this if I wanted to, and it would still be at perfect resolution. Because the file I brought in, it was a PNG, but it was at 6,000 pixels. And here, it doesn't need to be that big. So this is the way I want you to set it up. The last effect I want you to play with, and some of you will want it, some of you won't, is something called a bevel and emboss, which allows you to have a light source that gives you a highlight on one side and a shadow on the other side. It makes it look like it's 3D. So if you click that, you'll see it automatically makes it look like it's kind of indented. That's what embossing means. Which can look really cool, but maybe it distracts as well. But it, it can bring it out a little bit. And then you actually have the ability to really adjust all of these settings. And the one I like about it is not just can you play with the contour of that embossing, right? The shape of it and how strong it is. You can actually play with the texture. And I'll often turn the contouring off and just play with the texture. And then the texture is based on a pattern and it gives the default one for photo P is this kind of pinwheel pattern for some reason. So if we take that, you can see that you can play with that at scale. And you can see that pinwheel design like it's textured paper. But then if you actually click on the pattern, you can choose something that's more of a, a standard paper texture. And I tend to like that. And then you can play with the scale of it. It's kind of hard to see because I also have that, that glow turned on with noise. But you might have a lot of fun playing with textures as well, just to break it up a little bit. But the problem is you can't have texture without bevel and emboss being turned on. So then you can play with the depth you want. Because basically if you turn out your depth to zero, it's like you don't have a bevel or an emboss at all, but you can still have texture. So it's just playing with the settings. And I might play with it a little bit, but then turn its opacity down and then set it at um, dissolve. And that's just for the highlight. And then I can take, do the same thing for the, uh, for the shadow. And maybe, yeah, I'll just keep it at multiply and keep it at screen. So you just find what works for you. And I think if you have all of these turned on, it's too many. You can also do the texture with a pattern overlay, but you have to just choose one of those kind of basic textural patterns instead of flowers or polka dots or something. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that, with that text coloring. This is a nice trick. Instead of having to go through all those settings again, for anxiety, if I want to keep them the same, what I can do is just duplicate with Command J that layer and then drag the effects onto the new layer and then delete that copy. So now I have the effects on both layers the same. And that can keep help the readability. And yeah, I like that so far. So what have I done? I've done my color type. Now I can turn off my illustration, right? 
And I can do the same thing I did before. I can export it as a JPEG. And then it goes to downloads. I move that JPEG into my assignment eight folder. I'll mark it blue. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to crop so that you can see these are the first two things I turn in. My black type solution, my color type solution. And now we have to put it all together in a poster. So what am I missing? I've got my image. I've got my type. Now I need a background and I need a border. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my canvas size to be 9 inches. And I'm going to do, yeah, I'll do 9. I want it to be at least 9 by 12. So I might even do a little bit more. I might do 10 inches by 13 inches. And it's centered. This is inches, not pixels. That gives me a little bit more space for the background. I think, oh, that looks a little wide, so that's nine inches. So if I want it to be narrow, I just have to grow the height. And I want it to be like a playing card, so I want it to be at least nine by 12, so let me do the height at 14. Oh no, let's just turn it back to nine. I think nine by 13 will work well. There we go. Okay, next, I want to find a background for it. So, put in a new blank layer that's at the right size. And I can always just have a fill of white, just like we did for digital coloring. But that's a pretty boring poster background. So I want everyone to have a, a background that's not just solid white. And so what can I do to find backgrounds? Well, we can paint one in. So I can say, I'll keep the white behind, but I'll put a new layer on top. I can use the gradient tool. And just like I showed you how we would paint a sky for the cloud creature project, I can paint with a gradient. And this gradient is dark to dark, but I can change that gradient. And let's see what colors would be interesting. I like the idea of dark to light, but I don't like purple so much. So I'm going to make it kind of a darker neutral blue. Maybe like that. And then for light, and I can steal them from my image as well, these colors. Kind of a warmish gray, like that. And I can always add to it. I can put something kind of in the middle. Maybe in the middle, I go for like kind of the neutral green. I'm stealing these from my images. Okay, so I have a gradient like that. Now I can, using the gradient fill tool, I can do it at an angle. This is taking a while because the resolution's high. But it's gonna be a linear gradation across the background, going from dark to light. And if I want to play with the scale a little bit, I can keep my gradient right inside my borders. And that way it will keep the whole range in. Or if I want to limit it, I can do it way outside my borders. And then it will just be very subtle, this shift from cool to warm, which is a nice way just to augment flat color. Now that's digitally created, so it's perfectly smooth. It fills in all those pixels. So how might we texture that a little bit? Well, I could change it from normal mode to dissolve mode and then take its opacity down a little bit. And that way we get a nice digitally created texture on our background.
which looks pretty good and will print pretty well. So even if that's just your basic background, that's good. The other option is we can composite a background, right? We can search Google Images. And what might be interesting for a playing card like this, maybe like a wood grain. So just like we did mist texture overlays for our fantasy landscapes, we could try maybe a wood grain texture overlay for this. I want to limit it to large, at least a thousand pixels. And I want them not to be licensable, you know, with these little products, because then they're going to have watermarks on them. So I'm looking for ones that were uh, given by designers out of the goodness of their heart. Sometimes those can be hard to find. But this one, it doesn't have one of those licensing tags. And you can also search under tools, under uh, Creative Commons licenses. So like wrinkled paper, grungy wood. Just an option you have. Okay, now I have these different grains. I want to make sure that the image is nice. Yep, that's good quality. I'm not too worried about infringing on this copyright because it's just going to be a texture for the paper. It's not even going to be very recognizable. But it's always good to know how, you know, know about the image rights before you use it. So I can just drag and drop that on, on top of my background. I can rotate it, I can stretch it, though its resolution is less than my finished poster. As a texture overlay, it should work. And this one has a black border already in it, which might be a good indication of where I want a border for my poster. Because I want you to have a background and a border on your poster, even if your border is just solid white. Okay, so if I just use it like that, I'm not making use of my color at all, but if I play with its opacity a little bit, then my color comes through. Or if I play with my blending modes, and I like to use pin light, you see how my color now comes through in the wood grain parts. Let's zoom in on it for you. So that's nice subtle but you can see how that color is coming through as opposed to if it was on normal mode or i can use soft light that's what i often use and that really lets the color come through that i'm not so thrilled with what it does to the border so i'll probably replace that border because i don't like dark borders anyway but i might do um, overlay Kind of split the difference. And that's pretty nice. Yeah, I like that. And then I can always play with the opacity as well. And just kind of deaden it. But I think overlay is good. Maybe I'll just take it down to about 95% or 90%. There we go. Okay, now if I like my background, I think it works well with my image and my text. And I like my. my text color. Now all I need to do is add a border. And what I want you to do is a, is a floating border on top. And so what I'm going to do is use my shape tools to create the inside edge. And I'm going to use a rectangle and say, okay, I want my border to be right there. It's nice because in Photoshop shape tools, you can do a rounded rectangle which is perfect. Okay, now with that shape, I can select, I can rasterize that shape. That just gives me a really clean edge because it's a vector shape, right? And once I've rasterized it, I can use my magic wand and select the empty shape around it. And then on a new blank layer, I can fill that empty shape around it with white. And that gives me a clean border for my poster.